Hey, this is Rick from Hiking Emergency Beacon, and today I want to really re-emphasize how important these satellite messengers are. I have two recent real-world experiences about them, uh, but before we get into that, please like, subscribe, share, and turn on notifications so you'll be alerted as soon as I put out new videos uh, here with a brand new satellite messenger, I probably every three or four months, so stay tuned and, and then turn on notifications, you'll be alerted to that. So two different things happened. Um, the first one was kind of my fault. I was doing some reviews on the um, Garmin Enrich Explorer Plus, which that's what my son uses. We went out on the Colorado Trail, the segment one starts in um, Littleton and Waterton Canyon, and uh, it's about 14 and a half mile long trail. And um, so we were, um, we went out, my, my nephew was with me, with us, my daughter, my son, what happened was so we we had uh, it was about six miles or so up to the reservoir the waterton canyon reservoir or the waterton reservoir and um so we got to there and it was you know warm day and all that and um i i kind of started to feel like i may not be able to make that hike i had this 66 i with me i was testing it out for the first time and my son did not have his Explorer Plus with him because I had been doing some reviews and comparisons on this website here, uh, this YouTube channel, and uh, I had not put it back on his pack. Well, you could say, well, maybe it's his fault too because he didn't check and ask why his satellite messenger wasn't on the pack. So I was the only one that had a satellite messenger. Well, we get up past the Waterton Canyon. We were a mile up. We get under it. Um, the Waterton Canyon is, I, I don't really like that section of the hike uh, of the, uh, because it's um, about six miles or so is along a really nice flat road. Yeah, it starts to get pretty as you get farther into it and the river's going right by it, so there's some beauty about it. Um, but uh, when you hit the uh, reservoir or the dam up there, you get off on the single track, so it's more like a, a, a real hike. And the, it got st started to get a lot more pretty up there. But we were a mile up, we're, we're keep, we keep climbing, and I start realizing, I mean, I'm just, I'm struggling. And I'm going slow, I'm having to stop a lot. And um, my daughter, my son, and my nephew, they were all doing pretty good. My son and daughter started to uh, feel like they had, um, were, they're getting pains in their legs and they're getting blisters, which is kind of weird because they both have really good boots. My nephew, who has the worst boots and needs a new pair, um, he wouldn't have any trouble, but but he works uh, for a tree trimming company, and he's out all day, hard labor, you know, but, not hard labor necessarily, but I mean, he's out all day working hard. Um, so he's he's used to more uh, physical physical activity. So we um, we get up there, and I'm like, I, I finally stopped him. About I think we were about seven and a half miles into the hike. And I said, you know, hey, we <laughs> let's let's get real. I said, you know, I don't think I'm going to make this. So I didn't, because it was all downhill, I thought, you know, we were halfway through. I was like, yeah, I still got a bunch of uphill to go. The, the harder part of the hike was ahead of me. So I said, hey, I mean, it's all downhill. There's people everywhere. I said, you know, nobody needs to go with me. My daughter, though, um, she does a lot of search and rescue. And um, she, you know, we, we don't like to leave uh, people uh, by themselves. He's like, keep, keep, a, keep a group of two at least, right? Keep your buddy with you. Well, so anyway, she turns around and heads back with me. She really, she's not big into these long backpacking trips, um, so she didn't really care. Um, but so we, we start heading back, and uh, of course, she's uh, starting to fly, and um, she's becoming a pilot. She's going to become a commercial pilot, um, and she's like, you know, one thing I realized about being out here, she said, um, I'm much more into flying and being up in the sky rather than just you know hiking and sleeping out in a tent. Anyway, we had some real great conversations on uh, heading back, but it was a struggle. Um, so I'm getting to the reasons, the real world examples here, but I got got to set up the story here a little bit. So um, I'm struggling. We get to the dam, and from the dam out to the road to the trailhead, there's about every mile there's um, a pavilion, uh, outhouse, uh, covering, and a table so you can sit down. So we, I'm just at that point just trying to make it, and you know it's just the altitude, the whatever it is you know um altitude sickness being out of shape not being and you think being here for three years in colorado i'd be in better shape by now right but uh i'm an engineer i sit in an office all the time so i don't get out as much as i probably should 
So all of a sudden, you know, we're getting back. She's really starting to struggle. She's in a lot of pain. She's got horrible blisters, pains in her legs. I mean, kind of like a, almost like growing pains. And so we're about a mile and a half from the from the car. I think we're still 45 minutes away. My son then contacts us. Now remember, he didn't have a satellite messenger. So lesson one, make sure you have a satellite messenger, especially if you own it, right? So he is high up on the mountain, about four miles from the end of the trailhead. I thought they'd be done already. Um, but, but because he's high enough up, he has cell service. So fortunately he's able to, uh, contact us. My nephew, we were getting pretty, they were getting pretty close to the end. He, he, uh, walks on ahead, I guess thinking everything's okay. So my son's by himself, um, severe pain. Um, not just, not just, uh, um, blisters, but pain in his leg, legs. It's starting to get dark. He's starting to get concerned. And so he's able to contact me. So I've got my satellite messenger my 66 i and so i didn't have i didn't have cell service because i was in the canyon there's no there's no cell service in that canyon on the seg segment one and so he was able to contact me and he's getting pretty worked up pretty concerned and he can't really move he's uh, he doesn't even know if he can get off the trail so we were trying to communicate back and forth trying we were it takes a little longer with these satellite messengers because it's not like um it's not like you can text with a cell phone and it's all super fast so we were messaging and we were trying to figure out if I needed to call search and rescue and I knew about where he was. So we were debating whether my, my daughter again, uh, like I've already told you, she's been search and rescue before. Um, she's not currently, but she understands all everything about that and finding people and what they go through. So um, we're trying to figure out whether to call search and rescue. We finally figure out that, you know, he's, it's not time for search and rescue, but what he said was he's like, uh, you know, remember, my daughter and I are in a pain here. We're trying to get off the trail ourselves. And he's like, I need you to come over here and help me get off this trail. My nephew is over there. He ends up coming back and he realized something's wrong. He ends up going back, finds him. Once we knew my nephew was with him um, and we didn't understand the whole intent of his injuries, my son's injuries, um, we, which I told my son, I messaged him, I said, it's going to take us at least an hour and a half to get there, 45 minutes to get to the trailhead where we were at, and then 45 minutes to drive to get to the end of the trail, and then I, then, then I was going to have to hike up to find him. So so um, finally he's like, okay, he said, don't, don't do search and rescue, um, just uh, come and get me, come and help me. So we finally get off the trail. My daughter is in so much pain from the pain in her legs. She gets to the vehicle about five feet away from the vehicle. She collapses. I mean, she, she basically didn't completely collapse, but she's like falls onto or into the vehicle. Just severe pain. Just, you know, you know how sometimes like you doing whatever you can do to get to go where you're going. And then it's like, you're there and you're like, you just collapse. Right? So we get in the car, we immediately take off, start driving. Um, I, I could tell him, you know, physically I'm at my limit. I really can't do much more or I'm going to be in trouble, but I don't have blisters and I don't have pains in my legs. I'm just exhausted. Right. So, um, she tells me as we're driving, she's like, I cannot hike. I cannot go up that trail. Um, so we get over there and I'm just hoping and praying. It's like, Oh, please have them be at the end of the trail. And, uh, I don't have to hike. Um, cause they said they were about two miles away from the end of the trail. It wasn't quite accurate. Again, they didn't have satellite messengers. They were not able to pinpoint exactly where they were. They were about four miles away. So I like, I grabbed the pack. I lighten the pack up as much as possible. I have my satellite messenger. My daughter does not have a satellite messenger with her. No cell service down there at the river. And so she says, okay, if I don't, if I don't see you, by the time it starts getting dark, I'm gonna go out and get um, get help. So like, fine, right? So so, I start heading up the trail, and I'm I'm having to be very careful because I'm exhausted. I am wiped out. I I can't do much more, right? But my son's up there. My nephew is up there. So you know, what's the dad gonna do? Um, so I start going up the trail. It I get almost a mile up that trail. Finally find them. They're on their way down. He's got makeshift poles. I mean, my, my nephew's helping him get off the mountain. We, so I let him know exactly where we're at. We take our time. We do get off the mountain. He's in severe pain. Um, we get to the vehicle, and um, my daughter, um, he gets, we get his boots off. My daughter, daughter starts doing uh, first aid on his feet and everything. Um, I'm then sitting over on a railing behind the vehicle. 
and I start taking my boots off and I'm putting my sandals on. Just the effort of doing that. I start getting so nauseous. I, I take a drink of water. Man, it's just hitting me super hard because I have pushed my body uh, to the limit. It's, it was really, really tough. But just doing that, I started throwing up. Sorry, it's TMI, but I, it was really dry heaves. I wasn't really throwing up a bunch of stuff, but I, uh, it was, it was not good. And there was other hikers around there and my son was like, my goodness, I've never heard anybody, you know, throw up that loud before. I'm like, I, you know, I couldn't help it. I, I my body, my, my whole system had just reached the end of it. So, um, anyway, uh, I kind of told the whole story. Didn't need to tell you the whole story, but really rough situation almost needed to call search and rescue we all lived he was on crutches for three or four days after that but um we we lived we didn't need to call search and rescue but having the ability to communicate was on uh, was important um even though his communication was not good because him and i both made mistakes and didn't have his satellite messenger with him anyway that's lesson number one Lesson number two, my buddy from Mike, um, actually, so Mike and Rick Outdoors, uh, I'll put the link to it um, below and on the screen here. So Mike and Rick Outdoors, it's uh, all one word, but instead of the and, it's an N, Mike and Rick Outdoors. Why did I do that? I don't know, because I always have to explain it. It's not and, it's N. However, um, Mike bought the um, Montana 700i, um, and it's new for him. He's had it for two or three weeks. Um, and then of course, I was using a 66i. So we were going fishing, uh, about a five day fishing trip in Colorado here. And I knew from a from prior um, checking out the area that there was no cell, cell phone service or hit and miss, but pretty much no cell phone service. So I was on, I've been on him for a couple of years about getting a satellite messenger. And he kept putting it off. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be with you. Why do I need one? Or, you know, he always had an excuse. He goes, well, I'm gonna get one. Um, but I was telling him, I said, you're driving from Oklahoma. We're not meeting up before we get to the campsite. I was, um, I went out early. I left work um, noon on Wednesday because we, uh, we went from Wednesday to Sunday. And I, um, I told him, I said, I'm going to be up there finding a campsite, first come, first serve. I didn't know what site's available. I don't know where I was going to be. Um, so I said, You've, you have to have the satellite messenger. Because when I find that campsite, I need to send you the location and we need to be able to communicate. And then when we're fishing, sometimes he wants to fish all day. And I, you know, sometimes I'm like, after a half a day, I'm like, I'm done with this. I don't need to fish all day. So I said, we, we have to be able to communicate because we were on a trip last year at T Taylor River in between Gunnison, Colorado and Crested Butte uh, at Almont. And the Taylor River goes up to the east to the uh, Taylor Reservoir uh, up there. A long stretch of river, beautiful area. If you, if you ever get a chance to go see it, especially if you can go see it in October when the leaves are turning, the aspens are turning yellow, it's a great time to go. Um, so I knew from that, we had trouble communicating then. So I was like, this year, I was like, Mike, you gotta get a silent messenger. So, uh, so he does finally get one. And uh, we argued about it, about which one to get. I thought this was a better one. Um, but he's got an ATV, he does some uh, more trail stuff. So he got the one that was bigger that mounts to your Jeep or kayak or ATV, right? So he comes up here and I'll try to make this short, story slightly shorter. Um, so it wasn't a life and death situation there or a life threatening emergency. It was um, getting lost. And so he gets up there, I send him a message. He contacts me by the messenger. Because we said, hey, when you get to Woodland Park, by that point, turn it on by then so we can start communicating. And so he, he ends up at the, at, the, at the parking lot for Cheeseman Canyon, which is right by Deckers, Colorado. Cheeseman Canyon, uh, which is probably about six miles or so to the west of Deckers, there's a parking lot there. It's a uh, public access. There's private area for fishing that somebody owns, a ranch or something there. Uh, a fishing uh, club or something but you could there's a trail you could take for like two miles get up to a maybe two or three mile section of uh, of the Cheeseman Canyon uh, Cheeseman Canyon which is the South Platte River so um, so he gets to that parking lot and it's about five o'clock at night and he's like all right I'm here and I was like okay well I set my timer and so I go so we were way off the dirt road um that uh you couldn't see our campsite from and so I go and I stand over there I set my timer because I'm like okay 25 30 minutes uh he'll be here 
Uh, so I'm, I'm, I have my dog with me, Ranger. We're sitting out there, and um, I'm like, "Where is he?" You know, and I, so then all of a sudden he starts messaging me, because you know, yeah, I'm just about there. I'm a mile away, whatever. Well, so I sent him a message saying, "Send me your location," because on these devices, when you can message, you can you can send a message, send a quick text. Or you can say, send me, uh, send location. I said, send location. But remember, this device was so new to him, he didn't know how to do that. Um, but he didn't even respond back to me and say, hey, I don't know how to do it, right? I'm like, what are you doing? Um, so bottom line, what happens is he goes, takes over a highway north of the Cheeseman Canyon parking lot way out of the way it goes 30 40 miles out of the way on a super rough dirt road that was uh <laughs> it was so bad because it was only eight miles where you should have come in a lot nicer road pretty not hardly a pothole in it there was some um uh rutting and stuff so uh but but it's a nice road so he gets there and he's like if that's the road we got to take every day we're moving we're not staying here and i was like where the heck did you go? And so he showed me, and I realized that he went so far away, I, he would not respond to me to let me know to, to, that he couldn't send the location. I could not figure out where he was at. At one point, he says, hey, I'm by the uh, lake. I was like, are you talking about Cheeseman Reservoir? And he goes, no, it's some other lake. I was like, I was looking at the map. I didn't see a lake anywhere. I mean, I was zooming around. I saw nothing. He was that far off the map. So bottom line on that one there was it wasn't about uh, a life-threatening situation it's about getting lost and being able to communicate with each other um, when you don't have cell phone service super super important um, again um, on Mike and Rick outdoors uh, we're, we're gonna we have like a fireside chat where we talk about the day fishing at Cheeseman Canyon and then also at the uh, 11 mile canyon reservoir 11 mile canyon reservoir by the way was a great great place to uh, fish too much traffic for me there's a road along the whole thing which is uh positive and the negative there's a road along the whole thing so you know it's uh but we caught a lot of fish we caught nothing he caught nothing at cheeseman canyon because uh it's about two mile section heavily fish it, it's halfway between um basically between colorado springs and denver and it just gets a lot of people out there fishing it um big fish in the in the river you can't um it's catch and release uh so they're there but there's so so much pressure they're like i've seen that lure 20 times a day i ain't touching it right so it wasn't a good fishing trip as far as cheeseman canyon uh, but back to the importance of the satellite messenger I, i've had so many situations in the past where we rattlesnake water moccasin altitude sickness um uh, there's been other situations. I can't just think of them right now. Uh, the one with my son recently, um, and, uh, on the segment one of the Colorado trail, which I told you here in this video. And then also just to be communication when Mike and I were trying to meet up in the mountains in Colorado with no, no cell phone service. So, um, super important. And, uh, the reason I bring up Mike and Rick outdoors is because we have this fireside chat and we talk and, and he has only had the silent messenger for two or three weeks and he is sold. He has sold on the satellite messenger, um, having them. Um, and so we were talking about it. And, and I'm not the one pumping everybody up and say, oh, you got to have the satellite messenger or whatever. Um, he now realizes how important it is. And uh, I probably, you know, once he goes, when he goes out to Colorado or any pl other place that doesn't have good cell phone service, that satellite messenger will be on his pack or on his person somewhere. Uh, so you know, I just wanted to share these two recent experiences with you. One health-related pos possible search and rescue, and then the other one just about communication. So big, big deal. Um, it, they do cost money. There are cheaper versions. So it, it's just important. It's really important. And when you're young, uh, you think nothing's ever going to happen to you. I don't need it. You know, uh, I'm my, I can, I can handle it. It's only going to happen to somebody else. Like, okay, okay, that's fine. If it only is going to happen to somebody else, but you have a satellite messenger on you and somebody else is in trouble, you can communicate for them. Whether it's communicating to find out where you're at and if they need to find and meet up with somebody or get off a trail, or it's a call and search and rescue because they're physically in trouble, right? Um, 
it's not about you, right? Always. It's uh, you have something to protect yourself and communicate, but sometimes you can do it for other people. So um, that's my two cents worth. I just wanted to uh, just give you, share that and um, share why it's important to have these satellite messengers. So um, that's it. So thanks for joining me here at Hiking Emergency Beacon, and I will see you out here soon here in Colorado. But please like, subscribe, share, and turn on notifications because I have I put out videos all the time reviewing products and uh, satellite messengers. So uh, that notification will help notify you when I put a new one out. I don't spam people. Um, I probably put one out, you know, even on a busy time. I probably put a satellite messenger review out maybe once a week. It's really more like twice a month and maybe three times a month. That's for more of the average. So you're not going to get spammed. But uh, it's been great talking with you today. And I will see you back out here in Colorado next time.